Good morning, Piss Week Running World fans. It's the 26th of March 2021. I'm about to head out to the AIS track for the Shri Shamoy 24 hour as a part of the 48 hour festival today. And uh, it's going to be my first attempt at a 24 hour, so we've got to see how it goes. But we'll get out there and we'll give it our best shot. So we've made it out here to the AIS track. The 24 hours is going to kick off in about an hour's time. 48 hour entrance are going round and round, lanes one and two at the moment. Uh, we've got all our crew set up on the back straight and everything is good to go at this point in time. Feeling good. Conditions are amazing. Uh, it's not a not a cloud. <clears throat> it's nice and warm. Hopefully it stays like this for a while. It doesn't get too cool during the night. But I'm feeling good. I'm gonna give it my best shot. It's my first attempt at a 24 hour. Slow and steady. Fight fight the mental and physical pain and hopefully get as many laps as I can done along the way. I'll have the camera out and let people know how I'm going at a few intervals um, and uh, give a, a report on how I'm going and uh, let you know where I get to at the end. We're a couple of minutes away from ticking over 13 hours. Done, I think it's about 117.9 kilometers at the moment. Uh, 11 hours to go. About another 43 to hit that 100 mile milestone. Uh, still feeling relatively good given the circumstances I'm now best part of 18k over the furthest I've ever gone so that's an achievement in itself and I'm quite happy with how things are going taking plenty of walk breaks stopping every 20 minutes or so I think I'm in about third place or something at the moment not too bad. Uh, we'll keep going. I'll check in once more. Congrats on the miles. Uh, thank you. Uh, now I've got 23 hours, oh sorry, 22 hours, about 23 minutes. It's about an hour 37 or whatever it is to go, hour 36. Just ticked over 178k, I think it is. So I'm happy I got the 100 mile. <coughs> I'm now going to, I'll knock off 180k at least. Yeah. I'll be stoked, absolutely stoked. I'm feeling quite good because given that I've been up for about 26 and a half hours. Uh, I'll probably hit the deck, probably fall asleep before my head hits the pillow this afternoon. I'm comfortably in second place, which is amazing given the, some of the talent in this race. And uh, we'll continue on and get to the finish. Paul Marnie went through a hundred miles. 
It's just over 24 hours after having completed the Sri Chimoy 24 hour at the AIS, 187.77 kilometers in total. Uh, I've had a decent enough rest now and I'm slowly recovering. Uh, obviously a lot of things hurt at this moment in time. My, my left knee is completely shot, um, but <clears throat> it's to be expected. That's what happens in these long distance events, um, you're going to be battered and bruised and broken and, and that, but uh, overall I, I feel fine, um, it'll take a while to get over it and get back to some sort of normality, but uh, yeah, overall I'm fine. Just a little bit of external carnage from the um, ankle bracelet slash timing chip that we had to wear, uh, hopefully the camera will show you. It's Hopefully the camera caught that, but uh, yeah, not great. We're now just over two days post the Sri Chimoy 24 hour event in Canberra in March 2021. I'm feeling a lot better today. Most of the pain in, has gone. There's still a little bit of pain bouncing around my left knee and a bit of swelling has appeared around my left ankle where the timing chip slash bracelet uh, was located for the event but I'm treating that on my own and that'll go down over time. This was my first ever 24 hour event. I was quite excited to uh, pop my name down and and enter an event like this being local but also just being able to put myself in an event where I could really test myself physically and, and more so mentally to find out where those limits are and, and really push them as far as I could um, over such a, a long period of time. Uh, previous to this event, the longest distance I'd covered was 100 kilometres in a race and the it was longest time on feet was around 15 and a half hours for an event. So it was definitely a big step up, but I was up to the challenge and I was ready to go on race day.
We got out to the AIS track just over an hour and a half before the event and got my tent set up and aid station and crew all set up ready to go. I was watching the 48 hour entrance who had started at 10 a.m. that day. Um, go around for their early laps. Registration started at 11 a.m. so we all picked up our race numbers. I ended up with number 2429 and had our race briefing just before the start and we were to take off for our journey at 12 p.m. in lanes 3 and 4 for the next 24 hours. I'll break down the 24 hours into a few segments just so it's easy to keep track. So we took off at 12 o'clock and I sat back early on uh, from the lead three that took off. We weren't going overly quick. I sat back in the probably 2.30 a lap range, um, then started moving forward a little bit. Uh, the intention was to take on nutrition and hydration every 20 minutes and going through the first few hours um, I was taking that on and still running around the track while while taking that stuff on. I wasn't generally stopping because um, I just wanted to keep keep moving and you know when you're fresh you don't really want to be stop start stop start so that worked quite well, the pace was comfortable and things were going really well early on. I got into a good rhythm and the conditions were really good and everyone had, had settled down quite early and knew I was in for a good day. Uh, through hours six and seven, um, I had started to stop start more at the uh, at my aid station um, and then I'd walk for a little bit once I'd grab my food or grab my drink um, come back hand the stuff in get myself settled and take off again at eight hours that was the first time that I sat down for a, a proper break I cramped a little bit in my feet and my right hip flexor but I was able to get rid of those issues quite quickly. I took on a good amount of nutrition and hydration which I was taking uh, Tailwind, uh, Tailwind Protein, Coke, I had different types of sweet and salty foods um, along the way and I ended up sitting down for probably six or seven minutes for that first rest break. Going through hours eight to 12, I continued on with the walk run strategy. So I was generally walking one to one and a bit laps post having taken something on. And then I'd get back into a bit of a running phase again that was still working well um, so we're going between 8 p.m. and, and 12 a.m. at night uh, I still felt really comfortable I'd probably clocked a few more kilometers than I should have just with the ambitious early pace but um, I was still still running I was still pushing it wasn't really a whole lot of pain there was a little bit of quad pain in in both legs but it wasn't enough to put you off it was just that sort of standard pain that uh, you feel uh, probably in like a road marathon later in the piece to just for reference um, so I got continued on as I was and at the 12 hour mark I had gone through around 111 112 kilometers and I decided to take my second rest break. It was at the that 12 hour sit down break where I had sat down for a bit longer I, I believe it might have been uh, a good 10 minutes or so I, I probably got myself a little bit too comfortable sitting down for so long but I had a little bit of a conversation with Tom Allen who was in the 
uh, tent next to us. He was well well ahead of where I was, and we were feeding off each other. And he's he's really um, really nice bloke to to talk to and and along the way. But and so was his crew. And he'd mentioned that he was going to pull out at a hundred mile, which he'd said was about forty k away at that point, uh, which was a bit of a shock to me because he looked fresh. He just looked fantastic, but he made the decision that he did, and you have to respect that. Those sorts of decisions. Um, I put on the long sleeve shirt under my t-shirt going into the night. Um, it wasn't cold; it was quite mild hours out at the track, uh, which is quite unusual, but. Uh, you know, you have to get those warmer layers on early, otherwise it um, can go pear-shaped pretty quickly. And you have to keep the body temperature up. I continued on with a lot more walking than running through hours 13, 14, 15. And it was really difficult to try and motivate myself to to run for extended periods of time um, because I felt like, oh, if I run for five minutes, this will put me an hour backwards. And um, you don't know. It, it's just being in the unknown and I was just prepared to power walk through and feel safe doing that, extending the amount of time that I felt comfortable you know, to keep up a decent pace. I had my next stop at 16 hours where I sat down again and that was the first time that I changed my race shoes. The shoes that I had on for the first 16 hours of the race were the Hoka Mark 4s and they, were, they really did the job well. I was quite happy with how those shoes were but I just had already made the decision that between 16 to 18 hours I was going to swap into a different pair of shoes which were the Hoka Rincon 2s which I've run in many times before. I The sit down break was for less time, I believe it might have been five or six minutes and I was able to re-energize again uh, but taking off after that point the with the new shoes on it was like I was running barefoot on concrete. It just it took a good 20 to 25 minutes to get my um, feet comfortable again. They were in a lot of pain. Um, back to where they were pre-changing shoes. Uh, I kept going along and as I'd said there was more walking than running but I was keeping up a good power walking pace. I was doing anywhere uh, in the 330s, 340s per lap and I was happy to do that. Any Anything under 10 minutes a kilometre I was quite happy. Uh, I, f I figured that I was, I was going to get a good distance re regardless of whether I was running or walking and to me the pace was that I was running what I was walking was going to end up being the same. Uh, that's just how I felt at the time. I was keeping an eye on another runner, uh, Stephen Killey, uh, from the Ultra Mediocre team. From probably the 16 and a half, 17 hour mark, as I'd put quite a few laps on him early, but he was running really well after that point and was undoing some of those laps and I was slowly getting to the point where I thought no I I just don't want to run anymore um, so I had an eye on him and I was just keeping rough totals on where he was uh, he was saying hello and we were having very brief conversations every so often but um, yeah he he had me worried as to okay where are we projecting ourselves four, five, six hours from now. Uh, at 
19 hours, I had my next rest break. When I stopped at that 19 hour-ish point and sat down, I was about four laps from completing a 100 mile. And the temptation was there to just continue on and get to that 100 mile and then take the break, but I wanted to stick to my plan, so I stopped, I sat down, I took on primarily liquids as I didn't want to eat anything, anything solid, just I wasn't prepared to risk it at that point. Uh, but the liquids were, calories were helping and so I stuck with that. The sit down break was probably very limited, um, it was a very few minutes. Then I got back up and took off after that uh, 100 mile mark at it was about 19 hours and 21 or 22 minutes I picked up the well, I actually went from walking to running and I crossed the, the 100 mile mark and <clears throat> the, the couple of laps prior to that I did start to get a little bit emotional because it's it's one of those things that I'd had in the back of my mind for a while that you know, a hundred mile is a big milestone in in 24 hours, and I was going to achieve that well under 24 hours, and so it was a little bit emotional going through that mark, but I was I was glad that I did it, and I was continuing on. Uh, I had ended up going back to a to a walk because I had had enough of running at that point. The, it was a little bit cooler at that point, or it had been for the last couple of hours, but not too much. Um, so we really had to focus on keeping moving and keeping the body warm. Otherwise, um, as soon as you start shaking it, it things can go bad. Uh, but I still had a good pace up. I was still power walking and I had my head down and I was focused. I was still keeping an eye on what um, Stephen was doing and what others were doing on the track at that at that stage. Um, but once we'd gone through hours 20 and 21, I was thinking, I'm going to get there. It doesn't matter what happens, I'm going to get to 24 hours. And I think by a couple of people at, at the 22 hour mark, which was the last time that we changed direction, um, there was only about two people left, maybe one, which would have been Matt, um, who were actually still running. Everyone was was done. Uh, so we're all walking around the track. Um, everyone was still in high, high spirits for the most part and was having a joke and finding out how far people had done and what they'd done. And um, that was really amazing to see. It's, it's, um, after you know being in a lot of mental and physical pain for so long to for people to still be in high spirits and just give that positivity and motivation to others was was really helpful at that point um, getting to hour 23 and knowing when that very last hour the spirits picked up again still still turning over the laps and that and was still sub four minutes of a walking lap um, and just kept moving and I took my last drink at around 18 minutes to go and then it was within the last 10 minutes that we collected our little block with number on it for to place on the track when we got to that 24 hour with about a minute and a half to go, I'd crossed the timing pad for a, for a full lap and I decided I'm just going to start running. I, I don't care, I'm going to just run. And I figured I was going to get about 200 metres and I ended up getting just over like maybe 315, 320 or so on that last lap and put the block down and hit the track at 24 hours and I was I was out I'd had enough so I was done for the day 
and so we waited for the uh, measuring wheel to come round and see how much we'd done on the partial lap before we found out our total result at the end. The official distance I ended up with was 187.77 kilometres. So for my first ever attempt at the event, I was absolutely wrapped with being able to cover that sort of distance and being 87.77 kilometres further than my longest ever effort was uh, was just amazing. I, I was stoked with, with that sort of performance. Um, the top three ended up being Matt Griggs. And he was in absolute beast mode, um, clocking 244-odd kilometres, 244.087 uh, kilometres. Um, he, he was just an inspiration to watch for that event. Uh, and Stephen Killey did 174.598 for third. And he, he had me worried. He had me worried um, along the way because I thought he was going to catch me uh, as he was running a lot longer into the event than I was. So he, he kept me honest. I was, I was quite happy with that. Uh, we ended up at the presentation area about half past 12 and they were going through the presentations. Um, just as a side thing, I didn't end up feeling overly well. I had my head in my hands. Um, then I just didn't feel right at all. Uh, and the last thing I sort of remembered was that they were counting down the places. So they were at about sixth place in the men's under 50 awards and I actually fainted. Um, not sure how long for, but I, I was out. Um, I woke up or snapped out of it and they were part way through the fourth place presentation. Um, so it wasn't great to, to go through that, but anyway, that's, that's what happened. Um, got my, we, we all sort of gave a little speech along the way and um, we all collected our little trophies and you know, here's, here's my trophy for second place. Um, something like this means a lot. I've had a few bad events over the last few years where I've put in a lot of effort and things haven't turned out the way they should. So to be able to have something physically in my hand saying, you did it is, um, means a lot. Just as a couple of other mentions along the way, as I said, Matt Griggs, who won it, just unbelievable out there. It was just amazing to watch, um, inspiring and just, he, he just never stopped. Like he, he was doing unbelievable lap times even after 20, 21, 22 hours. He just, there was no stopping him. He was so determined and locked on to going over 240 kilometers that nothing was gonna stop the guy. So it, it was, a, it was a privilege and an honor to be out there with, with such a quality runner and, and human um, in an event like that. Uh, it's, just, it's just an amazing, amazing runner. Um, Stephen Killey, I, I'd mentioned, um, he, he kept me really honest, as I'd said, um, and we chatted a couple of times along the way. Uh, and everyone was just amazingly friendly about things. I, I didn't chat as much as I probably should have, so I may have seen a, a seen as a little bit antisocial. But so I apologise to runners that I'm I'm a bit like that. But um, yeah, the talking wasn't really something that I wanted to do later in the piece. Um, Tom Allen, uh, he was in the tent next to where I was on down the back straight. Um, and he he was he was really good to chat to and and feed off and um, and and learn what I could along the way. He's just I was surprised he 
was going to pull out at a hundred mile, but he mentioned his reasons, and you know you, you respect those reasons. Uh, he'll be back better and stronger for the next time. Um, but the guy I definitely have to shout out to Michael Brennan. Uh, he he's just a he's a real character. He's just a, he's a really great guy. Um, apparently, he is probably one of the best in the field. Um, but and he was off with the the leaders early. Um, something must have gone wrong. But the guy ended up from I think it was five or six hours. Um, you know, if he sees it, he'll correct me. Uh, he ended up walking the rest of the way. Like that's a that's real determination and guts right there to have you have your event go downhill so early but to say no nah, I'm gonna get to the end is is a real credit and he was always up vibe and always interesting and always pumping you up and asking how things were and it's just it, it was people like him out there that really made it made it special like it, it, you know, as I said, everyone was supportive and everyone was positive and keeping everyone up vibe and because it can be a mentally crushing event and anything that people can say or do to inspire you or you know give you that little bit of motivation or energy just is, is really appreciated and, and um, I can't thank people like Michael and Thomas and, and Matt and Stephen and and so many others um, for what they did out there. Um, it, it's just, you know, I can't, I can't thank those guys enough for that sort of thing. So I've come to the end of what ended up being a really long video, but uh, we had eight people who clocked over a hundred mile in that, in that event, which is amazing to see. That's, that's a really long way um, and a big, big milestone to cover. Um, I am going to enter another 24 hours as much as you think, oh, you're never going to do it again type thing as soon as you finish. No, I'm, I'm destined to do another 24 hour down the track. Um, it was an amazingly well run event. The organisers were fantastic. The, they provided the right information. They were all helpful. They, um, they communicated really well. It's just uh, the Sri Chimoy team uh, um, deserve a lot of praise for that sort of event. They, they're a very supportive community and um, there are very few places that you get that kind of support and and um, I, I highly recommend it. Um, so that's basically my video. Um, if you have any questions, comments, uh, for, then please put them in the comments section or send them to me um, and I'll quite happily answer them if need be but um, thanks for watching and I'll send out another video in my next event